Time for a little Chicago Bears overreaction Monday, a victory Monday, which is always nice. My name is Harrison Graham. We're going to get to some of the top storylines emerging from the Bears' 24-18 win over the Rams. And if you're still fired up about that win yesterday, because let's be honest, if you're 1-3, and three, it's a completely different feeling. I'm probably launching up the mock draft simulator. 2-2 two and two feels like you're back in the mix. One win can change a lot in the NFL. If you're still fired up, hit that like button. Go ahead and like this video. All right, let's get into overreaction Monday here. Is Caleb Williams improving as the Bears quarterback? And I think he pretty clearly is. Four smoking Jays. Bear down, it's happening. Now, that doesn't mean he's a top five quarterback in the NFL right now or anything like that, but he's clearly getting better every single week both eye test wise, statistically, et cetera. Now he obviously threw for less yards yesterday, but he was way more efficient. He threw the ball 23 times compared to 52 times. And that gets back to Shane Waldron, finding balance, running the football, which really helps young quarterback. Uh, really efficient uh, in yesterday's game. Uh, first game of a QB rating with over 100 uh, with 106.6 there. So that's very solid as well. And I just think when you watch the game, I think the eye test for a young player and really any player is way more important than a stat line. He just looks more comfortable. I thought yesterday it started a little choppy, which has kind of been a theme. They got to start these games a little bit faster. But as these games go on, he's getting more and more comfortable. Like in the Titans game, never really felt like he was comfortable. Texans game, it was up and down, a little more comfort. Obviously, was under siege all, all night. Last week, I thought he played a really good second half and fourth quarter. And then yesterday, after about the first quarter, I thought he was pretty comfortable throughout the game, which that is what you want to see. You want to see that linear progress, him processing information and understanding where he needs to go with the football. And it seems like he's been doing that pretty, pretty well week by week here. And all of a sudden, you know, almost 62% completion. Obviously, the volume of passing yards has been hit and miss game to game, but that's okay. You want the process to be there. You want him to understand what he's doing out there. Again, the eye test uh, is what you're looking for, that linear progression. So don't get caught up too much in the numbers, but more of the process. And, you know, what you don't want is good game, awful game, good game, off back. Obviously, at some point, he'll probably have a setback game where he doesn't play that well. But as long as over the course of time, you keep kind of pointing that arrow up. And I think from game one to game four, anybody who's paying attention – uh, can tell that he's clearly gotten a lot better from week one to week four, and now we head to week five. Now, I will say this. The deep ball, some of the downfield accuracy, it's still missing. I don't know if it's Caleb flat out missing throws. I think in some cases that's the case. I don't know if it's a timing issue. Like there was the one to DJ Moore up the right sideline to the front pylon where – Seemed like he hesitated. He took ownership after the game, said that was on me. It was just a miscommunication issue. Um, you know, the one to Rome uh, was certainly an overthrow, but the DB also bear-hugged the guy. I don't know where the defensive holding call was on that one. So I think it's a combination of things, but obviously Caleb has missed some of these throws. Like, we, it, Let's be fair and uh, uh, with these uh, evaluations. The downfield accuracy, if there's a – notable criticism to have through a month, I would say that's it. But the quick game's been accurate. He's really uh, been accurate on the intermediate game. The throw to Cole Komet, layering it over the linebacker was a thing of beauty. Uh, he looks comfortable uh, in that regard. So I I'm pleased with where he's at. Hopefully those big plays come. We saw uh, a couple to Rome last week. And uh, just got to keep building. That's what this thing is all about. Building brick by brick every single week. And, you know, by the end of the season, you – hope to feel like he's in a good place heading into next year, which I think we're on track uh, to see that happen. Do you like the progress Caleb Williams is making? Type Y for yes or type in for no. We'll make this the pinned comment on today's show. So if you get hit with the YouTube ad break, go ahead and reply with a Y for yes or an N for no. All right. Is the Bears offensive line better without Tevin Jenkins? I'm going to go two smoking Jays. People are talking. I don't want to get too crazy on this because when Tevin plays, historically, he has a track record of being a violent and solid football player. But something's been off this year. I don't know if he's been injured. Obviously, now he's got a ribs injury, and we'll see how severe that is. Matt Eberflus will talk to the media later today. Um, he did not return. Uh, but I've just felt watching him that he lacks some of that violent play. He's had some back and neck issues in the past. Is that catching up? Um, he doesn't seem as fluid. I, you know, it just feels off. 
you know, like Darnell Wright, we were like, what's going on? And then he's on the injury report with a back injury, and you're like, that kind of explains some stuff. He hasn't had as good of an anchor. By the way, I actually thought Darnell, outside of one or two reps, was pretty good yesterday. Uh, but in the brief snaps Tevin did play, which was just 11 snaps, he just wasn't good. He graded terribly. Now, 11 snaps is, you know, one-fifth, one-sixth of a game typically. He could have certainly turned it around, but – the PFF grades out him as a well below average player with how he played yesterday. I'm not saying overall. PFF grades throughout the course of the season for him. He's been kind of average, slightly above average. But last year he was like a really, really good starter. Not an all-pro, but, you know, borderline Pro Bowl type of player. And I think for one game, three quarters of a game, however long it was, it felt like, and again, I'm, you know, I haven't done a play-by-play -play analysis of all five offensive linemen of every snap yet or anything like that, but it felt like the offensive line played better after he left. You found some chunk plays uh, in the running game. Uh, the protection was still spotty, but uh, you know, I think it was better than it's been in some games. Um, again, certainly not great, but it did feel better, did it not? If we have to be honest, now. Over the course of a season, are you going to be better without Tevin Jenkins? Probably not. I still think he's one of your better offensive linemen, but got to give credit where it's due. Matt Pryor brings energy. He's got limitations as a player, but he's a mauler. Uh, Nate Davis uh, came in there, and after a drive or so, I didn't notice anything glaring, so got to give credit there. Um, we'll keep an eye on this Tevin thing, this offensive line thing. It all still feels very fluid, but uh, it should be pretty interesting to see where it goes from here. All right, before we get to maybe the juiciest – part of this show, so you're not going to want to miss that. Got to tell you guys about our sponsor. Uh, the ticketing sponsor of this show is Game Time. You want to go watch the Bears beat the Panthers next Sunday at Soldier Field? You can do so with Game Time. Football season is well underway. We got basketball and hockey around the corner as well. It's time to get off the couch and go watch your favorite team's play. I love watching my favorite teams play. And Game Time's new feature, Game Time Picks, makes it easier to getting tickets to go watch your favorite teams play as well. It'll filter out the fluff to show you the best deals on the best seats so you don't have to filter through thousands of tickets. You got the Bears uh, against the Panthers. You got some Blackhawks home games coming up. One more preseason game and then the regular season gets going. Bulls will be just around the corner as well. And hey, Maybe you want to go to a concert. Usher is going to be playing at the UC in late October. You can go get tickets to that as well. Game Time shows you views from the seats. Super Deals, which is the best bang for your buck on a quality ticket. And it's going to get you the last-minute tickets for the lowest price guaranteed. So here's what you need to do. Download Game Time today. Go to your app store. Search Game Time. Big white letter G with the black background. That's it. Uh, create an account. Use code CHATSPORTS to get $20 off your first purchase only right now. It's code CHATSPORTS for $20 off. Uh, terms do apply. Download game time today. What time is it? It's game time. All right. This is pretty fascinating. Tom Brady. Was he almost a Chicago Bear? Four smoking Jays. Bear down because the man himself said so. I, I got to be honest, I did not think we would get a Tom Brady revealing what truly happened in 2020 free agency when he ultimately signed with the Bucks. He called the Bucks eagles game yesterday, uh, said he had some old note cards uh, around the house from, you know, he's doing pros and cons of what teams he was interested in, and uh, that kind of helped him deter determine who he ultimately signed with. And he revealed this on the, on the kind of the pregame, uh, the open or whatever you call it. He said, ultimately – Chicago was a team, I've never told that story before, they were very stealth in their recruitment. I was seriously considering them. That's pretty wild when you think about it. Not only just now, but when you kind of flip your brain back to four years ago, because I remember we talked about it once or twice on this show, and I remember kind of thinking, ah, he's not going to come here, no history of offense, cold weather. Because remember, that was kind of a big thing when, he, when him and New England split. It was like, the big talking point is warm weather situation. Tampa, indoors, San Francisco was in the mix uh, at one point. Like It felt like that's where he wanted to go, to a warm weather climate. And so I remember thinking, I was like, he's not going to come to Chicago. Like, lame duck regime that could get fired, and it's cold. Uh, and that's kind of what I remember. What I remember is the weather thing, and then also, I think he wanted to go to the 49ers, or he really was considering that. Uh, he's from Northern California, and then they kind of backed out. Um, after that, it seemed like Tampa, it was full speed ahead, but he 
You said on the broadcast yesterday Chicago was stealthy. Clearly they were because that did not get reported much publicly that they were in the mix and that they uh, that he seriously considered them. Now, people have done zoom-ins on these note cards, and you can kind of see there it says 10 mm did the Bears only offer him $10 million? Because you see on Tampa's, it's $27.5 uh, million. And he said he had about 18 uh, categories of criteria of what made him uh, choose the Bucks, And he did say the salary uh, was part of that. So did the Bears go super cheap? Classic uh, classic Bears? Who knows? I, I still am not convinced he would have come here if, uh, if the money was equal. Uh, but it's fascinating to say the least. And it makes me wonder if it would have worked. The Bears that year went 8-8 eight and eight and made the playoffs. The defense was still pretty good, and Foles and Trubisky were pretty bad, if you remember. I know Mitch had like a three-game stretch late in the season to rally them and make the playoffs, but Foles was terrible. Uh, he wasn't good at all. But the defense kept them in a lot of games, and I think that's something Brady was looking for too. Like, hey, I'm over 40 now. Can I find a defense that uh, you know I'm used to in New England to keep us in these games? And he goes to Tampa. What does he do? immediately wins the Super Bowl. And I also thought about this. You probably would have gotten Gronk as well. Because remember, Gronk was retired, and Tom Brady convinced him to come out of retirement and play with Tampa. So um, it's just, you know, it, sometimes in life, the, the you never know what could have happened, and who knows. It, it, something tells me he wouldn't have been as effective with Matt Nagy and the Bears. But they had Allen Robinson, who was still really good at the time. Um, you know, it's 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 very, very interesting. But uh, uh, the fact that he revealed that is pretty fascinating, and it certainly caught my attention. And I want to know from you guys what you think on this. Do you think Brady would have led the Bears to a Super Bowl just like he did the Bucs? Type 1 for yes or type 0 for no? It's uh, Again, it's hard to know. I'll say this, Brady versus Rodgers a couple of times a year for a few years there, that would have been fascinating because uh, we haven't gotten that a ton in their careers. But uh, – yeah, it's, uh, it sounds like the Bears were the runner-up team uh, when it came to his recruitment. All right, there you have it, Chicago Bears now. Talk about a pivot. You almost get Tom Brady per him, and then you trade for Nick Foles. I mean, what a disaster. The guy that beat Tom Brady in the Super Bowl, ironically enough. My name is Harrison Graham. Bear down, victory Monday, 2-2. Two and two. We got a live show later today. We'll see you guys then at 4 o'clock Central Time. So go ahead and subscribe and turn on those notifications.